Oof. Uh, yes, what sir. What do I have to bring tomorrow, sir? Just a Whatever you want. Your, the, your, you, you, you have you it already? I sent this one to you. Uh, I, oh, I do. Uh, but if you have it on a stick, okay. we can... I, I bring we it can tomorrow. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, spin-orbit interaction, then we'll try to sweep everything and come to databases. So um, you remember that um, for, uh, we had that ion charge scaling uh, that tells us that you increase charge and your energy is kind of uh, increase as well. Uh, spin orbit actually depends on nuclear charge. If you look at neutral atoms just going from low nuclear charge to high nuclear charge, you will see increase in the uh, spin orbit splitting. So what, what's here is, again, kind of rescaled structure for configuration ns, np, for different ends. So this is 2s, 2p for neutral beryllium, 3s, 3p for neutral magnesium, and so on and so forth, and in here with neutral mercury with uh, configuration 6s, 6p. So again, at low end we have pure LS coupling, and so we cannot even resolve the triplet P0, triplet P1, triplet P2 here, but for neutral mercury, we resolve them very nicely, and if we apply those, that semi-theoretical Landé formula that I mentioned at the beginning, you will see that it gives you values for spin orbit splitting of this size, with, which more or less agrees with the with the measured values. Now, here's the question. This is uh, neutral, neutral mercury. Uh, can we find any lines of neutral mercury around us in, in the nature? Yes? Yes. The answer is yes, we can. Uh, all these lamps have neutral mercury. And if you use this direction vision spectrometer, and look, you will see a very nice blue line at 435 nanometers. You can look and then give it, you don't want. <laughs> Try to look up. And you actually, there are two, two lamps at the, at the back that have just continued. No, you have, to. okay, let me show you what. <laughs> so there is a split here on this side that you can uh, make uh, smaller and bigger. And uh, you look this side and you can change focus but pull and push on it and if you look upstairs you will see a very nice wonderful uh, spectrum that comes from the fluorescent lamp and the line the blue line all the way well to the left if you look this side would be would be uh, mercury one okay Now, if you take this same uh, uh, direct vision spectroscope outside and look not at the sun, of course, but just the direction of, of the sky, you will see a wonderful continuous spectrum with dark lines which are known to be the absorption lines in solar atmosphere. And these lines are called Fraunhofer absorption lines, discovered by Fraunhofer, a German scientist, long, long ago, and this is postal stamp. And one of the most famous uh, lines in this spectrum is the doublet of two lines in neutral sodium. This is called D doublet because simply Fraunhofer named them A, B, C, D, and D fells here. And these are two very close lines. They come from the 3S, 3P transition in neutral sodium and 3P has very small spin orbit splitting. Therefore, two lines are very close, 5890 angstrom, 5896 angstrom. So they're really close. Now, again, you go along isoelectronic sequence, and this relative splitting between 2p, excuse me, 3p one half and 3p three halves increases dramatically, so that at higher nuclear z on the order of 80 
the difference between 3s and 3p one half is four times smaller than the difference between 3s and 3p three halves. And this is something that uh, we measure in our experiments. If we try to look at the same D doublet in sodium like high Z ions, for instance, of uh, tanks and other heavy elements, you will immediately find that 1D line is around 8 nanometers. And this is the line in the middle, here, 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 and here. The other D line sits all the way back to uh, shorter uh, wavelengths, around approximately 2 nanometers, the same factor of 4 that, that we expect. Now, in addition to LS and JJ coupling, there are other types of coupling when neither uh, electron electron nor spin orbit interactions are much stronger. And uh, um, one of these things is called JK coupling. Normally, excited states in neutral noble cases are described by this type of coupling. So you take one electron from the fully closed P6 shell and bring it up. Now, it turns out that the hole in NP6, and of course, we know that if you have a closed shell and take one electron out, the remaining hole behaves like, like an electron, has the same uh, uh, quantum numbers. So this hole has very strong spin orbit interaction, and therefore, it characterized immediately by the total J value that for P electron can only be one half or three halves. Then to get your final total angular total uh, angular momentum value, you have to sum up this J value with the orbital momentum of this excited valence electron into the new number, which is called K. And then finally, to take K and add the remaining unaccounted for uh, uh, angular momentum, which is spin of this outermost electron S, to get the total angle momentum. And this type of coupling is uh, uh, very clearly seen in uh, neutral noble gases and some other systems as well. Now, a few words about super configurations. We remember we started with a picture of average atom that becomes more and more and more detailed. And on the way, one of the options uh, to build your collisional radiative model upon is to use super configurations. So, we know what configurations are, 2P5, 3S, 2P5, 3P, and so on and so forth. Now, in multi-electron ions, especially in, in dense plasmas where you have to include many, many excitations that are important for the total uh, population kinetics, the number of configurations, not even speaking about number of levels, becomes extremely higher. In, in that case, it may be beneficial to use this more general combined representation of super configurations, which basically corresponds to the case when you, instead of using detailed description for each of these configurations, represent them by one super configuration, where you simply say that you have two electrons with n equals one, then seven electrons in n equals two without specifying how these electrons are distributed, how many are in 2s, how many are in 2p, and one electron in n equals 3. So you replace this 6 with just one, which makes your model much more uh, easy to work with. Of course, you lose some detail, but there are statistical methods uh, uh, that were developed specifically to derive spectra from a uh, super configuration approach. And by the way, two of the codes that you will learn over this week Flycheck and Critton are heavily based on uh, super uh, configuration approach. Now, here's an example of why super configurations are not bad at all. This is an example of calculation of photoabsorption cross section in, uh, in uh, uh, some ions of gallium at uh, relatively high temperature. Uh, now, the upper spectrum is determined in collision radiative model that is typically called detailed, uh, uh, detailed level accounting, which means that you build your model in terms of level. 
And you see, really, you have thousands and thousands of lines here. This is the result of the same type of calculation performed with super configuration. Simply it's shifted so you can see the difference. But it more or less goes over the detailed spectrum. And of course, the computational efforts doing super configuration calculations is, I wouldn't say infinitely smaller than this one, but literally orders of magnitude. And I think Hune will show you this. A few words about ionization potentials. Uh, importance of ionization potentials is related to the fact that they are directly connected with ionization distributions in plasmas. And therefore, uh, it's always good to know uh, whether we can easily determine what ionization potentials are and whether we do this correctly. So in general, ionization potentials is uh, an ionization potential. Obviously, um, it's calculated when we take one electron and bring it higher and higher to higher and higher ends. And we know already from scaling that all this should scale like z uh, squared uh, with uh, z spectroscopic charge. What you see here is the data for ionization potentials of neon-like ions with the ground state 2p6. And the red uh, dotted uh, or dashed line is the result of the fee feed with the leading term z squared. So you see it really nicely agrees. Now the uh, blue points from our database in this range were determined from the experiment. And you can do it for low charge ions. Then these numbers were uh, determined from interpolation or extrapolation. And the highest were determined from theory, because uh, basically there is no experimental data whatsoever to try to get. But nonetheless, you see everything changes very smoothly and nicely, goes like z squared. And you can use this information to calculate or determine ionization potential. Now, unfortunately, sometimes uh, even uh, theorists can forget uh, uh, some peculiar peculiarities uh, for, for this type of calculation. So this is a table from a paper that was published in 2004, big paper that contains ionization potentials for all ions of all atoms. And unfortunately, most of this uh, 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 data in that paper is incorrect simply because the authors didn't probably forgot about the fact that with higher z, everything becomes more and more hydrogenic. Now, let's, let's look actually what, what happened. So if we look at this nice table, this is uh, 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 isotonic sequence. This is range of nuclear charges. And this is the configuration that was used to describe uh, uh, this particular ion. All these results are incorrect. And why they are incorrect, we can easily see on the example of xenon-like uh, xenon isotonic sequence. So the neutral xenon is a noble gas, very stable uh, atom that has ion structure, which is 4010, 5s squared, 5p6. Closed shell D, D closed shell, shell 5s, closed shell 5p, and this is what the authors use for all ions of the isoelectronic sequence. But we remember that you go to higher z, 4f may become more preferential than 5, and this is what happens for z. This is exactly what happened here. And when you take your ion charge to higher and higher values, xenon-like ion becomes more and more 4010, 4f8 instead of 5s. 2, 5, P, 6, which simply means that, unfortunately, all those results were incorrect. Once again, ionization potential scale is z squared, but don't forget to think what the actual ground state uh, can be. Now, in a plasma, ionization potential is actually a function of plasma condition. Highline states, excited states, are no longer bound because of interaction with the atoms, ions, and electrons uh, in plasmas. Now, let's take a simple example. Let's take neutral hydrogen. If neutral hydrogen atom sits here, where will be electron with N 300,000? 
Well, we can calculate. The orbit radius goes approximately as Born radius times n squared. So take n 300,000, make it square, and you will see that this electron will sit somewhere there, around four and a half meters. And of course, you understand that even in the, in the air, there are so many particles in between that electrons at five, four and a half meters know nothing about the nucleus. Even more so in plasma, where you have charged particles uh, flying around. You take your electron higher and higher, further and further away from your nucleus, it gets screened by particles uh, in plasma and even potential for the particles uh, sitting next to uh, uh, this particular nucleus changes as well. So if we look at isolated atom, again, this is just 1 over x potential for neutral hydrogen. We have lowest state at 1 Rydberg, n equals 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, and then continuum. And if we put another hydrogen atom nearby, let's say we put another one atom here at, at 3, another one at minus 3, certainly the total potential that electrons sitting here sees is not only potential related to, the, to uh, its original nucleus. It will also feel the other nucleus nearby. And therefore, potential becomes like this red curve, which means that if we had these states from n3 and 4 bound in the first case, and this is the potential, now these, these states sit above the top of the potential, which means they are now in continuum, and then the effective ionization potential lowered to approximately this value. And this is called ionization potential depression. There are many different formulas uh, how you can determine, and it seems that Right now, in dense plasma physics, we do have problem because the results of uh, advanced experiments, advanced calculations, <coughs> showed some significant mismatch. Of course, even these states here uh, are not completely bound because if the potential barrier is not too wide, you may easily have quantum mechanical tunneling that brings electron from here to here. So there is a lot happening in plasmas. OK, uh, we have approximately 25 minutes, so uh, I, will try you, uh, I will try to show you a um, um, few features of the atomic spectra database that we develop at NIST. Uh, you can access it at this address, physics.nist.gov slash AST. Extensive list of atomic, spe uh, atomic databases is available at the PlasmaGate site at Weizmann Institute. Uh, there are actually uh, quite a few other collections of basic atomic spectroscopic data. Uh, VALD, which is Vienna Atomic Line Database, primarily for spectroscopic purposes. It uh, now sits primarily in Uppsala, Sweden, with Mirror in Moscow, Russia. There is uh, Spectra W3 in Russia, a Chinese Atomic and Molecular Database, Chianti, which is combination of basic atomic data and collision related modeling, model for uh, astrophysics. Kuruz databases uh, in the United States. IEA has some uh, data on atomic structure and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, probably it's fair to say that uh, only NIST has evaluated and recommended data on atomic structure. So let me, let me show you. Um, few features of, of the database. OK, so this is the, uh, you, can, you can access from the address that I gave you on the previous page. It will redirect you over here. Uh, right now, we have already version 5. Uh, it provides uh, interface to data on spectral lines and energy levels, as well as ground states and uh, ionization energies. Now, uh, let's start with general overview of what we actually have. So here's a link that's called uh, list of spectra. No, thank you. Um, so let's see what we have for uh, energy levels. OK. Now, uh, of course, this uh, periodic table looks a little bit different from what you have not in terms of elements, but in colors. And different colors show you how many levels are actually available for one or another 
uh, uh, element or ion. So looking at the elements, you see, uh, okay, this color show that there is between 2,000 and, and 5,000 energy levels, and the iron group elements are represented the best. Then molybdenum, tungsten, and uh, molybdenum, tungsten are very much used in magnetic fusion. That's why they're so well uh, studied, and iron group elements are used everywhere, particularly in astrophysics, uh, as well neon. So uh, again, different colors mean different number of levels. What you see on the right is uh, the same information, but showing you how much is available for each particular ion. So there are two axes. This axis is the uh, nuclear charge. So we go from hydrogen, which is Z1, to Darmstadtium, which is Z110. And this axis is ion charge. And again, different colors tell you how much you have for each ion that corresponds to a small square here. Let me just make it a little bit uh, bigger. OK. Um, and a little more. OK. So uh, if you put your mouse over any square here, it will tell you. So this is, for instance, molybdenum 23. 22 times INIS has only three levels. You move to something like uh, iron 2. It has 1,000 levels. And from here, you can directly go to the uh, uh, data for particular ions. So if I click somewhere here, it brings me to uh, chromium 9 with 49 levels. Uh, it shows you which isoelectronic sequence it belongs to, in this case itself. And then uh, this is uh, the list of levels that we have in the database. Um, in some cases, we do not have as complete spectroscopic information as we'd like to have. For instance, uh, we know that uh, because an atomic states characterized by J and parity and all other things are not exact, in principle, the state can be linear combination of different contributions. So for instance, <coughs> um, a state in helium-like ion, 1s2p with j equals 1, has contribution for both triplets and singlet, which means we would like certainly to have information about the weighting coefficients from this uh, uh, basis function. We don't have them for this particular case, but uh, in general, in, in many cases, we do. So for instance, if we go to um, neutral iron, OK, it's, it's a long list. You see, in some cases, there is information about contribution of different components. So for instance, configuration 3D7 for S with a uh, term for F for the 3D7 electrons, these levels with J equals 4, 3, and 2 have small contribution with uh, different 3F term. Uh, also, there's information on the uh, Lande factor that is used to calculate split in, in a magnetic field. Of course, in many cases, uh, we have information about the source of, of data, and uh, this is uh, very important as well. Um, uh, for levels, of course, you can choose different units, again, centi inverse centimeters, electron volts, Rydberg. If you want to look just at some part of levels uh, in the ion, you can use additional criteria. So for instance, iron 1, as you saw, has uh, 847 levels in the database. If you want to look at one particular configuration, you click this button, then it gives you the list of available configuration and terms. You choose whatever you want, and then this is what you get, only 12 levels for this particular case. Okay. Now here you see uh, examples where you have really, really uh, strong uh, interaction between different terms in this case. So for instance, 3D1 level for this configuration has only 45% 
contribution from real 3D, but then it has 35% coming from single P, and so on and so forth. And this information is certainly uh, crucial when you try to understand what, what the radiative probabilities can be. Now, uh, going to uh, the lines, <coughs> again, um, uh, here you can enter different, uh, different uh, requests for one ion or a group of ions, or for instance, all, uh, all possible spectra within a, a predefined spectral range. So, uh, in addition, you can choose uh, what kind of data you want to get. For instance, everything that we have or only data where you have transition probabilities for those spectral lines or only those transitions where we do know upper and lower uh, uh, energy level classifications. Only those transitions that were actually observed in the experiment. We also have some tools that allow you to do diagnostics. So, for instance, uh, Let's look at, I think it would be something like Neon 7. Let's see. <coughs> yeah. So uh, this is an example of how uh, this database can be directly used for diagnostics of low-density plasma because these calculated results that are uh, uh, there for diagnostics were calculated with Chianti code, which is astrophysical code. So um, in this case, well, let's, let's go step, one step back. So total we have um, 661 lines for uh, six times ionized neon, which is baryon-like. And few of those lines can be used for diagnostic. This calculation was done by uh, uh, John Silix. Uh, colleague Uri Feldman from the Naval Research Lab. So let's look again at what we have for uh, diagnostic. Five lines in the database have information about how they can be used for density and or temperature diagnostic. So let's take a look at density. Here's line at 55.9947 nanometers. If we click on density, it shows us how ratio of intensities of this line with another line at 56 to 992 depends on electron density. And again, these uh, calculations were performed for low density cases. Therefore, it doesn't go above 10 to the 16. This axis is log of uh, electron uh, density in uh, centimeter minus 3. And obviously, you can use uh, this ratio only in the region where the ratio changes the most. So it's, it would be good to do analysis between, let's say, <coughs> 10 and, and 10 to the 12 and 10 to the 10th in, in electron density. Similar for temperature, but a different line. Here's ratio of 97.33 to 89.52. You see the ratio of intensity of these two lines changes as a function of electron temperature. Again, this is log in Kelvin in this case. And if the ratio is one tenth, you're here, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, from the beginning, this database is where this database was developed as the source of uh, data on uh, evaluated and recommended uh, energy levels and, and spectral lines. And you can, again, choose many, many different options to find whatever you need. You can get output in vacuum or in standard uh, uh, output, which has vacuum below 2,000 2, angstrom or 200 nanometers, air output with the count of air refraction index between 200 and 2,000, and vacuum about, above 2,000 nanometers. You can ask for uh, oscillator strength output or log GF. You can use uh, you can get only allowed or only forbidden in addition to general output that contains both allowed and forbidden lines. Um, and one of the options that you already saw in my presentation is the uh, Grotrian diagram. So let's take a look at the Grotrian uh, diagram that simply shows everything that we would have for uh, 
neon 7, and all possible transitions. Now, this uh, tool uses Java interface, uh, and therefore you need Java installed on your computer. So what you see here is the whole energy structure for the, uh, for the seventh, for, for Neon 7, uh, Neon 6 Plus. Again, this is the uh, zero energy corresponding to ground state. This is the ionization potential, and there may be more than one ionization potential depending on uh, which electron you bring up. And you see there are states above ionization potential, and those are auto ionizing states that uh, Stefan Fritsch will be mentioning tomorrow. Now, the axis here corresponds to different series of levels. Let me just zoom in so that we will see what happens in here. Okay, so if we zoom in, yeah, the whole, the whole picture becomes better seen. Now, what you have here is 2S square, 2S, 3S, 2S, 4S, 2S, 5S, and so on. This series corresponds to 2S and P. So these levels are 2S, 2P, 3P, and so on and so forth. Each level comes from the database, and each connected line corresponds to the spectral line that is in the database. In the, if you click on the line, let's say this one, it highlights in red, and you get information about the lower and upper level of the transition. So this particular line connects ground state to a squared, and here's the quantum numbers 1s0 with energy 0, with a level 2p 4d, term 1p and j of course equals 1, which is uh, located at this energy. Here, you can get information about the line itself. Here's the wavelengths, Ritz wavelengths, which is the difference of, of energy, 6.8 nanometers. The uh, Einstein transition probability value, 2.4 10 to the 9, and uh, accuracy of these transition probabilities. This is what we also try to add to the database. We want not only uh, the numbers, we want to understand how accurate those numbers are because this is where physics is. Physics is really in uncertainties, not, not in the real numbers. And you can continue this analysis for all other uh, transitions. If you just push the space bar, you see everything jumps to the next line and so on and so forth. Uh, you can filter out weak or strong transitions. So for instance, right now we have on this plot, all transitions with A values between zero, and here's the highest in the right bottom corner shows that the highest value of A transition probability is 3.4 10 to the 11th. Now let's select only the strongest transitions, everything above, like say, 10 to the 10th. So in the minimum, A, we put 1, 10 to the 10th, submit, and these are only the lines with A values 10 to the 10th or higher. Of course, they correspond to the largest energy differences. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with Grotian diagrams, with the output. You can even build Saha LTE spectra, but we will talk about this uh, on, on uh, Wednesday. Now, let me show you <coughs> really just uh, for a few minutes uh, how you can run uh, Cowan's atomic structure code from the Los Alamos uh, uh, web interface. Oh, excuse me, that's... Uh, okay. Um, uh, I bookmarked it somewhere. Just a second. Um, okay. Yep. Okay. So this is the interface to Los Alamos atomic physics code. Uh, we'll write down 
uh, the link. Basically, you can not only use it to calculate atomic structure, but also to do calculations for different types of uh, cross-sections, ionization, or excitation. But if we want to restrict ourselves just to uh, atomic structure, uh, let's start with the okay calculation here. It doesn't matter what we, what we choose for collisions, because right now we want to look only at atomic structure. So we start the calculations. And we have to uh, pick up uh, some ion. By default, they have carbon 2 plus. OK, let's do something different. Let's do the same neon 7 that we had, which would be neon 6 plus. And we go to configuration selection. So it immediately offers you the ground state, which is 2s squared, and the first excited 2s2p. Well, we can take only these two, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's take also other configurations that may uh, uh, that have relatively low uh, energy levels. So we'll have 2p2, and uh, let's take one of the electrons from the uh, ground state 2s shell and bring it to n equal 3. So let's add uh, 2s1, 3s1, uh, 2s1, oh, excuse me, 2s1, 3p1, and 2s1, 3d1. OK, so we have uh, levels within n equals 2 uh, and n equals 3. For completeness, we can also add situation when we have one electron n equals 2 and one electron n equals 3, but let's take the low electron not 2s but 2p. So we will add 2p1, 3s1, 2p1, 3p1, and 2p1, 3d1. Okay, so we have everything for n equals 2, n equals 3, click, and here we have the result of online calculation. 46 energy levels were calculated, in the output, we certainly have the energies right here in electron volts. And this is the level notation. Of course, the ground state 2s squared has zero energies. And then we go higher and higher and higher. Let's just quickly compare uh, this calculation with what we have in the atomic spectra database. So we take also uh, neon 7. Uh, let's take... Uh, electron volts. So we have the same values. Um, that's it. Let's let's see what we what we're having. Okay. So the first group of levels in ASD for two S two P is of course the triplet. Uh, we know that triplets are normally uh, sitting lower than singlets. This is one of the indication of the so-called Kuhn's rule in atomic physics, and the energies are approximately 13.8, 8, and 14. Let's see what we get with the counts code. It's 13.7, 13.8, 13.9. So certainly you would not expect to get spectroscopic accuracy from such simple calculations that runs for a fraction of a second. But at least it gives you reasonable idea where your levels are and how they are arranged. But uh, you can hardly get the same uh, quality for neutrals. You go to more highly charged ions, it's really the interaction of electrons with the nucleus that becomes stronger. You remember the z squared term that uh, grows faster than other z, z uh, uh, and, and other terms. But for neutrals, uh, you may probably not get such good accuracy. Let's, let's do the same calculation, but not for uh, neon, but rather for, for neutral beryllium. So we do beryllium, ion charge 0. We go to configuration selection. We add all those configurations that we had for uh, very like neon. Okay. The same 46 levels because uh, we have the same number of electrons, 
uh, uh, and we cannot get any difference. Now let's look at what we have for beryllium one. Okay, uh, so uh, for neutral beryllium, the lowest energies are two seven for uh, for the lowest two s two p triplet p. 2.7 electron volts. Let's see what we get here. Well, 2.6 something. Not too bad, but uh, not as good as for not as good as for uh, 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 neon. If we look at this group of levels, this is 2p squared triplet p with 3p0, 1, and 2, all sitting at 7.3. Let's see what we get here. 2p squared, triplet p, 7.4. So 7.3, 7.4, the difference is not that, that bad, but uh, uh, it, it's fair to say that, for instance, Cowan's court would, would better work for uh, not so neutral ions, but still not going too far in ion charge. This is really where relativistic methods and codes uh, are becoming uh, much more accurate. And uh, certainly we will hear uh, tomorrow a lot about, uh, about this uh, uh, codes and methods, in particular, regarding uh, radiation and authorization. Um, OK, uh, finally, uh, a few words about the database for ionization energies. Again, uh, ionization energies are important because uh, really the ionization distribution of uh, charged states in plasmas uh, strongly depend on, on these energies. You can get <coughs> uh, all possible ionization potentials for all ions up to nuclear charge 110. So for instance, if you want to look at what's available for iron, this is list of all ionization energies for all ions of iron from neutral to hydrogen-like. Now, some of them were determined experimentally, and you see these numbers are here. Those that have uh, uh, red brackets or parentheses were either uh, extrapolated or theoretically calculated. Again, it's, it's really difficult to uh, determine ionization potentials for uh, highly charged ions. And of course, literature sources are available for each uh, and uh, every number here. If you want to look what's available not for iron, but for all iron-like ions, you just, I think, do iron-like. And then you get everything with the same number of electrons for neutral ion, single ionized cobalt, double ionized nickel, and so on and so forth. So this is kind of databases that uh, many atomic spectroscopists uh, use uh, regularly, but also many plasma spectroscopists, those who work with atomic spectros and plasmas, because they really contain a lot of information. Uh, let me stop here, and I think we have coffee break, right? OK, thank you.